Let's get into the game. In the bottom right hand corner, we have the blue Zerg Liquid Xenio. And in the top left hand corner, we have Fnatic Knight and as the red Protoss. I saw you shut up. Um, you know, it's it's funny. Morgan came out and he corrected us. It wasn't a uh, an Indiana Jones whip. It was a Dominatrix whip. I wonder where we got that from. <laughs> I wonder where we got that what? from. What? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to continue after that thought because Morgan is giving us the death. He's stare. giving us the death stare, man. Um, but people are asking for another tip about women. I feel like I, sh I have so many. See, I have so many to do that. But uh, night end, he's <laughs> our producer saying no, man. He he hates women. Is that is that what you're saying? No. No, he's not. Game information, not about outside the game information. That's what we're focusing on today. We're Let's introduce our players. We're catering to our fellow. No, there's a lot of females camaraderie. watching. All the females watching it and StarCraft 2. Thank you so much for tuning in. We want to respect you. In fact, our switcher tonight is Kylie, and she's doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. And uh, God, I don't know. I just I'm I'm so impressed by how much she's learned in such a short amount of time. So it's very cool to have girls in esports. But let's introduce our players. Andre, do that. kick it off for us. All right. So I already said that, unfortunately. But let me go into the two base timings because I think that's one of the most important things on Antigua Shipyard. Really, Void Array play is one of the most feared plays on this map. And j not necessarily like your... If you know your opponent is doing it, it's still hard to stop, but it's the fact that your opponent could do it. The main problem, a Void Array can look up here and do a lot of damage into the main. Not only that, they can charge up on the Destructible Debris over here and all of a sudden start pushing the third with really good positioning. Obviously, Roaches have a really bad concave over here, and on top of that, they have that charge, that charge which is so hard to actually um, get ready. So, Void Airs are definitely a really big problem. There are a, a bunch of other two-base all-ins that your opponents could do, or they can just go macro style. So there's a lot of options for Protoss on this map, and it really forces Zerg to be either a little bit assumption-based, and, you know, it's not really c coin flipping, but they try to say, I hope my opponent isn't doing this because I'm geared to defend against this subset of builds. Or they have to play super, super uh, standard or super defensive, and they end up losing out when it comes down to a, just a sheer macro game. I was really hoping you are going to say super macro game because everything is just super. According Did to I Andre. say super? <laughs> yeah. <A lot? laughs> you said super like four times Gosh. in your description. All right. I was I'm like, man, I think Andre needs a little bit more superlatives. But uh, <laughs> no, we're, no, I understand completely what you're saying. The two base timings can be very devastating. In fact, we've seen a lot of mix-ups in terms of PVZ with one base openings. Although, of course, that's not how it is whatsoever. But MC has been showing some pretty cool things, especially in his fight club against Stefano. We saw an interesting build on Antigua. And the general consensus that aggression on Antigua is pretty good because you can manage and bounce back. Of course, with Protoss, if you can kind of prevent Zerg from moving out the natural and take out the third. Same thing with Zerg. You can take out the debris and try to shut down the third before Protoss is really able to establish any form of defense. And uh, that's actually my might be out of the question, because what do we see in the production tab? We see a bailing nest. <laughs> and Interesting. Yeah, a lot of and Zerg is being produced. I think his opponent is just saying, well, I'm going to punish you for um, having this SimCity. The SimCity is really weird. A sentry is the first unit mm. out, though. But there are two main areas of Ooh, contention. He got a Stargate, too. And the Stargate, yeah, sure, Banelings and Zerglings can attack it, but it can't really stop a huge force of Zerglings. Oh, but... No, it's outside of the range. Oh, okay. You I knew exactly watching. what I was saying, but... Uh, that could have been pretty That could have been pretty bad if you saw, but... He's making six Banelings, which should be more than enough if he wants to target the, the pylon or the cannon. Yes. Now, one thing to note is he can easily put a gateway down here, but as soon as this pylon gets destroyed, it's actually unpowered over there, and here we go. Will he, what will he oh. actually target? He's going to go for the cannon, and the entry oh, point no. has been broken wide open. Oh, no. Night End has nothing. The two Banelings actually survived and managed to be able to chase down some of these probes, and the probes are fighting them head on. The Zerglings oh. also getting into it, oh, and Night End losing all of his probes. GG. And a very well-executed Baneling bust from Xenio and Night End. Uh, never really stood a chance against that kind of build, no. especially by the way he was teching. No, it's the SimCity, man. And the SimCity. The SimCity crushed him. He was not, yeah. 
not well equipped to deal with that. Obviously, one force field wasn't enough. I think he should have just protected the photon cannon at all costs and went from there. His second century was coming really? up. Really? Because even if he protected the photon cannon, there's still a pylon. Like, he, the idea is that he, the SimCity was spread out so much yeah, that I one know. force field couldn't cover all the weak spots. I know. But would you so. protect the pylon or would you protect the photon cannon? That's true. In the end, you got to take the It's cannon. just the, the best oh. of the two. It's unfortunate <laughs> because uh, I, I still think it's a crummy situation no matter yeah. what. I still feel like um, that SimCity doesn't gear himself to defend against yep. any incoming pushes like that. But really nicely played. Zenio just mixing it up and showing his mix-up is enough to beat his opponent. So Zenio takes the series 2-1 to one and moves up in his division, getting another point to his collection to... Try to see if you can rank up his division. Of course, jockeying for a playoff position. You can find all of that at NASL.tv.